and welcome back to Blasters and Boomsticks with your host Grant and the lovely Dan. Yoo-hoo. Hi there, mate. Hey, so well. today's review is going to be The Empty Man. Uh, 2020 came out, or actually, I think it was made 2020, released earlier this year or later last year, depending uh, which country you're from. Um, kind of a little bit mismarketed um, because the film essentially is, is is an ex-cop who's on the trail of a missing girl and he comes across a secretive group attempting to summon a terrifying supernatural entity. Um, from the trailer and the marketing, um, kind of makes it seem like it's something else, like mm. in a bit of a Freddy Krueger, Jason kind of ghostly apparition hacking down teenagers. Yeah. Um, the film is anything but that. So, Dan, straight away, I'm going to ask you, did you like this movie? I loved it. Yeah, I yeah. really enjoyed it. I was very, very surprised, but pleasantly surprised by how good it was. I was expecting, like I said from the trailer, expecting another candy van, you know, another you know, urban legend, Bloody Mary, that sort of thing. Um, and it was not that at all. It was, it was such a thinking man's thinking person's horror yeah um, and so much better for it yeah I, I i agree i i saw the trailer and i think the trailer is good as the fact that you can't really piece anything together um and, I, and from my perspective um i was like mm, some nice imagery but i'm not so sure um but then like about a month ago i started to see quite a lot of people say um just give this movie a chance it might not be your cup of tea but it is not what you think it is um so i just i adored i adored it i'm not gonna lie i adored it um it's got problems Mm -hmm. not gonna deny that but it is um it's ambitious maybe too ambitious what this day and age you don't really get this is a major like like as a major studio release for a horror, you don't get this film anymore. Yeah. It's so surprising. And the fact that Disney fucked up and didn't put the new logo for the... <laughs> yes, yeah, yeah. Really noticeable, wasn't it? Yeah, so... Um, so uh, there, there is so much to discuss. Um, yeah. I, I really don't know where to start. So I suppose we start with... Um, we get a 22-minute prologue. Yeah. So what's your thoughts? You see that like, the prologue it sets up the whole idea that um, you know it's it's these four four well, the young adults um, in the nineties, isn't it? Ninety five. Ninety five. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And there's the hiking. Um, we head up into the mountains, and you know they sort of one of them falls down a little hole. That's uh, uh, Aaron Aaron Paul, I think, from the yeah. Void. What a, what a great performance. Yeah, yeah, brilliant. Yeah. And he, he, he sort of you know his friend goes down to, to look for him. Um and uh, finds him cross legged sort of staring at this skeleton figure. Um yeah. inhuman looking, all these extra arms going off and his hands sort of clasped together and Reminded uh, me of the Angel episode from uh, The Simpsons where they were finding the Angel. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> See the Angel. <laughs> um, and he's, he's mesmerised by it. He's almost catatonic yeah. by it. And obviously when they, they're getting back to the final cabin, uh, we're getting back to this cabin, uh, and weird shit starts happening. And I think it, it grabbed me straight away. It was something unusual. It's so like you sit and it's sort of like... Um, was it Himalayas? Yeah. Um, you know, so, so having all that mysticism around it, and uh, it just it built on its dread straight away. Mm. You got that feeling, all this super, you know, this little um, supernatural elements sort of kicked in straight away. You knew something wasn't right uh, just by the way he reacted. Um, how the characters were acting around him as well, they were panicking, you know, trying to be, you know, there was a snowstorm coming in, all these elements sort of thrown together, which could almost be a little trope, bit tropey, but he never felt it. No. And you get this beautiful shot of when uh, Aaron Paul's girlfriend's 
um, looking out of the, uh, I think it's you know, Aaron Gould's character, um, yeah, uh, looking out of the uh, the door when it's a snowstorm and you see a sort of black ragged figure yeah. in the distance. Um, it just it, it built up that creeping, it's incredibly well. And then, you know, you, it, certain elements, certain things happen, I don't want to spoil too much uh, to these characters. And then the title happened, and you, like you said, you're 22 minutes into it, and then the title's happened, and then you complete it somewhere else. And I was like, yeah. I thought that was the film. Yeah. I thought that was, that, that was going to be it. And I don't know things were happening quite quickly. I just thought, where are they going to take this film there? Is it, you know, but I didn't, even though I'd seen other actors, you know, in yeah. pictures and stuff like that, I generally thought the majority of the film was going to be set on the mountainside. <laughs> Absolutely. Um, and I think from seeing that raggedy, cloaked, mm. rags black figure in a snowstorm, which against such vibrant whites mm. and light, I think again shows you how creepy and, and, and how, how the dread can, it can fail in a film pretty easily. A, a lot of films rely on just dark and not seeing yeah. much. Yeah. Whereas even though we're in a snowstorm, we still saw it. So again, testament to the film for doing that. But the film after its prologue, it obviously goes and moves along to a ex cop. Yeah. Who, who's um, there's there's an urban legend going around about the empty man that you find a bottle on a bridge, you blow into it while thinking of him. Night one, you kind of hear him. Night two, you kind of see him. Night three, he finds you. Yeah. And I think that's how the film was marketed. Yeah, it's like we've seen it in um, like Drag Me to Hell. That was the sort of yeah. the basis the, for that. You know? Yeah, absolutely. Um, and I, he's got he's, he's is the cops or ex cops friend? She's got a daughter who goes missing. We mm. then get to see that she's some of the empty man. Yeah. He then starts to try and find her friends. He comes across a secret, like kind of cultish society. Yeah, that's quite philosophical. Mm-hmm. Um, in kind of like nothing exists, everything exists within your mind. So that kind of um, yeah. artistic bullshit <laughs> we sometimes <laughs> we sometimes get. Um, and then it kind of again, it's a great testament to the filmmaker because as this is happening, I've got the prologue in the back of my head, thinking, right, okay, I've got this urban legend in my head, and then I've got what's taking place. As we're talking, I'm thinking, how is this all going to match up? Yeah. yeah. Like, what is this society doing? What is this group doing? What is the neighbour doing? Apart from having that dreadful haircut, I will have to <laughs> take points off for that. <laughs> it was pretty fucking old. I'm pretty sure my sister had that haircut in the early 90s, you know. I've seen a photo, mate. It's, your sister didn't have anything that bad. <laughs> um, yeah, and I think it... it kind of feels like the X-Files meets Twin Peaks Mm. and I love a film where you're in the boots of a character like we're figuring it out and like a lot of films you can sometimes get one or two steps ahead (sighs) I felt like I was I was him yeah yeah I was figuring it out as it was happening um and I will say there's a couple of points where he he goes to again I don't I I don't want to be too specific because I think it's a film you just need to watch and enjoy mm. and let it just happen in, in, unfold in front of you but there's, there's a bit where um, he finds a, a cabin and he sees this like a, a few of these um, court members for lack of a better phrase yeah. and they believe in manifestations they believe they can think things into being um, and make them flesh and you see this really creepy VHS video where like you've got this weird manifestation and then the person who's manifest, you know who's is, is, is kind of manis I can't even speak now <laughs> manifesting it um, he just kind of looks at the camera and his, his eyes are piercing and, and and that whole weird thing where I think the, the, you see it first it's just like an arm or a legs there yeah. and, and, and it's just Again, it sounds, if someone's listening to this, they might be like, what are these guys talking about? It's not scary. But the way it's shot is so yeah. creepy. Um, and then we get to see the main 
the main character again come across like a group of those people and uh, they, they, they're like either practicing something or, or celebrating something on a fire and they notice him and they kind of all move together and notice him and he, as he takes a step back they take mm. a step forward in unison yeah. he takes another step back they kind of stop take a step forward and he kind of is just like yeah no and he just <laughs> runs and it's really yeah. nice because it again i felt like the entire film i was i was him i was yeah. trying to figure it out and now if i was in that situation spending my time in the in the guy's shoes i'd be like i'm fucking off out of here yeah and the fact that he does that i was like oh thank god wasn't it nice to watch a a supernatural film um that was a mystery where you spent the majority of the mystery thinking what the fuck is going on yes I mean, rather than being like a lot of mysteries where you go, I figured that out within 10 minutes of watching it, you know, yeah. career, whether, you know, it's, it's almost like some of the, some other mysteries, it's as the Columbo effect where, you know, Columbo, you always knew who the, you, you were shown who the murderer was at the start, yeah. and then it was all, the, the, the enjoyment was watching Columbo find out who that person was and seeing how they messed up and everything, and a lot of modern films do tend to show too much, yeah, um, absolutely. Perhaps the same problem. So you, the entertainment sort of disappears when you figure it out almost. Whereas this, this genuinely, you sat there through the majority of it going, I really don't know where this is going, and but it's in such a, a positive, enjoyable way. Yeah, it's never frustrating. You never sat there going, Oh my god, just do something. You just think you're on the edge of your seat, just thinking, What the fuck is going to happen next? What? And. My issues with the film come, but I think the film's just too ambitious. Like by mm-hmm. the end of it, I can go, this happened, this happened. But then there'll be times when I think of a question, go, what does that mean? And I think, I don't know. <laughs> I'm gonna have to find out. What does that little bit mean then? And mm-hmm. and, and and I think that's great for rewatchers and and stuff. But I think ultimately there is a part of me that is slightly unsatisfied because I think there needed to be a bit more. Um, but it's better to leave them wanting more than it is to get more. Yeah. Um, yeah. So I, I do appreciate that. But it is, I think it just, it just tries to tell a story that's just, it goes everywhere and it covers, mm. like you said, it covers like, what, two decades? Yeah. So, I, you know, from my point of view, I'd say it's probably one of the most enjoyable films I've watched this year. I'm yeah. very surprised at it. Yeah. Um, two hours, 15 minutes running time, again, from a major studio for something that's been sat in a vault somewhere at Disney. I'm I'm astounded this has been released Yeah. without yeah. someone going, get rid of that 20 minute prologue. Yeah, it's, yeah. it's brilliant. You know, it just, yeah. it does, it's, it, it's baldy. Yeah. Which is nice. It's such a yeah. nice change. I would say so. So recommendation? I highly recommend it, yeah. Yeah, it's it's one of my favourites I've seen this year so far. Oh, good, yeah, yeah. No, I mean, I mean, and you know, we'll give a special shout out to it's James Badge Dale. He's the yeah. he plays the lead detective. And I thought it was brilliant. Oh, yeah. I mean, <laughs> I'd only seen him. To my knowledge, I've only seen him in Iron Man Three. Yeah, um, and I think that was the extent of it. So, and it's it's made me want to go and see yeah. some performances. You know, it's... I, I've, I've seen him in World War. Z, Z, uh, depending where you come from. Yeah, I think it's, um, I think he was good as well because I think he's he sometimes got a look about him that you can, that he's, that at first without knowing it, you can just go, you've got a kind of generic TV actor face. <laughs> I can be sold by this or I can be easily put off. And yeah. it's fantastic. He's, he's, he's really, really good. Mm. So, you know, um, very, very impressed. And I'd just say, just watch it. Um, and and we really want um, I not even we I really want you guys to comment, <laughs> make yeah, a comment yeah. in the comments. Let us know what you thought, your theories and stuff, because this film should get your brain thinking for days after. Yeah, yeah, about what right. it is. Yeah. So two recommendations you've got there, guys. Uh, we'd like a like, subscribe, and a share. We'd really appreciate that. And like I said, just let us know what you thought of the film because I hope you, I hope you guys watch it, and I hope you're really excited because um, I've watched this film like <laughs> three days ago, and I'm absolutely still thinking about it and loving it. Yeah, me too. Yeah. So, well, again, thank you very much, and um, yeah, please tune in next time. <laughs>